Of all the prehistoric climate shifts, none defy our imagination quite like this. The last time Earth was completely iceless. No Antarctica buried in snow, no Arctic freeze, just endless oceans and lush forests where glaciers now reign. Forget the Ice Age. This was a time when crocodiles lurked near the North Pole and rainforests swallowed continents whole. It's not science fiction, it happened. And here's the twist. It could happen again. Because Earth's natural state might not be icy at all. So what made the planet melt? And what froze it again? To find out, we need to travel 55 million years into the past, to a forgotten fever dream in Earth's deep history. The moment when the world didn't freeze, it boiled. Earth has two extreme climate modes it naturally swings between over millions of years, ice house and greenhouse. In an ice house Earth, like the one we live in today, massive ice sheets cover the poles and the planet experiences long-term glacial cycles where ice advances and retreats in rhythmic pulses. Temperatures are cooler globally, sea levels are lower, and the biosphere adapts to harsher, drier conditions. But in a greenhouse Earth, the script completely flips. There's no permanent ice at either pole, carbon dioxide levels are sky high, global temperatures soar, and lush tropical forests stretch into regions we now consider frozen wastelands. Sea levels are hundreds of feet higher, Coastlines vanish beneath warm, shallow seas, and animals like turtles, crocodiles, and even early primates thrive in what would now be considered the Arctic Circle. These aren't short-lived blips. They last for millions, sometimes tens of millions of years. Earth has flipped between these states many times across its 4.5 billion year lifespan, and it all comes down to a complex dance between plate tectonics, orbital shifts, volcanic activity, and carbon cycling. When continents collide or drift across the equator, they can disrupt ocean currents and trap heat. Massive volcanic eruptions can pump CO2 into the atmosphere for thousands of years, creating a thermal blanket around the planet. And over even longer timescales, subtle changes in Earth's orbit, called Milankovitch cycles, can tip the planet toward warming or cooling by changing how sunlight is distributed across the globe. The crazy part? Earth spends more of its time in greenhouse conditions than in ice house ones. In fact, the last 34 million years of glaciation are the exception, not the rule. Most of Earth's history has been hot, wet, and iceless. So when people say the planet is warming, what they really mean is that Earth might just be heading back to its default setting, and that's a greenhouse world. Around 55 million years ago, Earth experienced one of the most dramatic and mysterious warming events in its entire history. A climate anomaly so intense and rapid that it left a permanent scar in the geological record. It's called the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, or PETM, and it marked the last time Earth was completely iceless. During the PETM, global temperatures surged by an astonishing 5 to 8 degrees Celsius in as little as 20,000 years a blink of an eye in geologic time. Carbon dioxide and methane levels skyrocketed, possibly triggered by volcanic activity, melting methane hydrates from the ocean floor, or the sudden release of organic carbon trapped in ancient soils. Whatever the cause, the result was unmistakable. The planet transformed into a full-blown greenhouse Earth. The polar regions, once chilly and seasonally dark, turned shockingly warm. Fossil evidence shows that palm trees grew in what is now Alaska, and crocodiles swam in the warm Arctic waters. There was no ice at either pole, none. Sea levels were dramatically higher, and coastlines were pushed far inland, submerging vast stretches of land under shallow, tropical seas. The biosphere responded with an explosion of diversity and expansion. Mammals rapidly evolved and diversified in the post-dinosaur world, taking advantage of the warmth and abundant vegetation. Small primates, early horses, and bizarre hoofed creatures spread across continents, while reptiles like turtles and snakes flourished in regions that are now temperate or even frozen. Flora responded as well. Tropical and subtropical forests pushed far beyond their traditional ranges, covering most of the earth in dense, humid jungles. Even in the high latitudes, Swampy forests teeming with life replaced barren tundra. It was a world of extremes, humid, hot, and utterly alien to our modern climate. 
But the PETM wasn't just a brief hot flash, it was a planetary transformation, one that restructured ecosystems, altered ocean chemistry, and paved the way for the rise of modern mammalian lineages. This was the last time Earth was truly iceless, a natural greenhouse that showed just how fast and how far our planet's climate can shift when pushed. So what caused this ancient fever to erupt across the planet? Scientists believe one of the main suspects was methane. Specifically, methane hydrates vary deep in ocean floor sediments. These icy cages of gas are stable under cold, high-pressure conditions, but when the oceans warm just slightly, it may have triggered a massive chain reaction. Methane hydrates began to destabilize, releasing enormous quantities of methane, a greenhouse gas over 80 times more powerful than carbon dioxide, into the atmosphere. That sudden burst of carbon supercharged the greenhouse effect, sending temperatures soaring in a geological instant. But methane alone might not have been the only culprit. There's evidence pointing to massive volcanic eruptions that spewed CO2 into the skies over thousands of years, possibly linked to the North Atlantic Igneous Province, a region of intense geological upheaval. As magma tore through organic-rich sediments, it may have ignited vast carbon releases from below Earth's crust. Some researchers even suspect changes in Earth's orbit. Tiny shifts in tilt or wobble that affected how sunlight hit the planet could have set the stage for warming creating just enough of a temperature nudge to destabilize everything. And once the warming started, Earth's own climate systems may have locked it in. Feedback loops like melting permafrost releasing more greenhouse gases, darker oceans absorbing more heat, and evaporating moisture amplifying atmospheric humidity could have all played a role in accelerating the process. The truth is, the exact trigger is still debated. But what's clear is that once the heat was unleashed, it didn't stop. The PETM shows how a relatively small change, whether geological, orbital, or chemical, can tip the entire planet into runaway warming. And if it happened once, under natural forces, we have to ask, what happens now when the carbon surge is coming from us? As the planet sweltered under the intense heat of the PETM, Earth's ecosystems and geology didn't just sit idle. They responded in ways that would reshape the future of life and climate. One of the most fascinating and crucial events during this time was the rise of a tiny aquatic fern called Azola. In the warm, freshwater surface layers of the Arctic Ocean, Azola found perfect growing conditions. It bloomed on an unimaginable scale, spreading across vast polar seas like a living green carpet. These massive blooms weren't just a biological oddity, they were climate warriors. As Azola photosynthesized, it sucked enormous amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and stored it in its tissues. When the fern died, it sank to the seafloor, locking that carbon away in the sediments. Over millions of years, this natural carbon sequestration mechanism helped cool the planet and slowly dial down the extreme greenhouse conditions. This Azola event is considered one of the most significant biological drawdowns of CO2 in Earth's history. But while it was happening, the world remained in a state of incredible warmth and biodiversity. The absence of ice allowed for a pole-to-pole -pole stable climate with minimal temperature differences between equator and poles. Rainforests weren't just limited to the tropics. They reached up into latitudes where we now find boreal forests or frozen tundra. High-latitude ecosystems were bursting with life. Insects, amphibians, reptiles, and early mammals adapted to a humid, stable, almost tropical environment. Even the oceans reflected this balance, warm from top to bottom with slow-moving currents and low oxygen zones. It was a planet unified by warmth, a world where biodiversity flourished in regions that today are cold and barren. But beneath the surface, the seeds of change were being planted. As Azola drew down CO2 and plate tectonics continued their slow march, Earth's long return to an icehouse state was beginning. The dominoes had been tipped, and the transformation wasn't over. Around 35 million years ago, the blazing greenhouse Earth began to cool, slowly but decisively. The shift wasn't sudden, it was tectonic, literally. Deep beneath the surface, Earth's plates were on the move, and those movements would rewrite the planet's climate script. One of the most critical changes was the slow drift of Antarctica toward the South Pole. 
As the continent settled into its polar position, it became increasingly isolated from warm ocean currents. Then came the final trigger, the opening of the Drake Passage between South America and Antarctica. This allowed a powerful new ocean current, the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, to form. A churning, frigid conveyor belt that circled the continent and trapped cold water around it. Warm currents could no longer reach Antarctica, and the temperature there plummeted. At the same time, India's collision with Asia drove up the Himalayas, unleashing massive rock weathering that pulled CO2 from the atmosphere over millions of years. Combined with other closing seaways, like the Teeth of Sea shrinking and cutting off equatorial heat distribution, these geological shifts conspired to cool the entire planet. As global CO2 levels dropped and Antarctica was cut off from warmth, ice began to build for the first time in tens of millions of years. Glaciers spread across the continent, marking the dawn of a new ice house Earth. This was no temporary freeze. It was the beginning of the icy world we still live in today. The oceans cooled, sea levels dropped, and ecosystems shifted dramatically as the poles grew colder and more seasonal. The once steamy, swamp-covered poles became frozen deserts, and tropical zones contracted toward the equator. Earth had officially flipped, leaving behind the iceless world of the PETM and stepping into a colder, harsher chapter. The planet would never be the same again. Even though the Ice Age feels like ancient history, the truth is, we never really left it. Earth is still technically in an ice house state right now and has been for the past 2.5 million years. What's changed is that we're currently living in a temporary warm phase known as an interglacial. But the big picture, ice is still very much part of the system. The reason for this ongoing cycle of glacial and interglacial periods lies in the subtle rhythms of Earth's orbit called Milankovitch cycles. These are three slow, overlapping changes in how Earth moves through space. Eccentricity, which affects how circular or elliptical our orbit is. Axial tilt, which influences the angle of Earth's lean and how intense seasons become. And precession, which changes the direction Earth's axis points, like a wobbling top. Over tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of years, these shifts change how sunlight is distributed across the planet especially in the high latitudes. When conditions align just right, cooler summers in the Northern Hemisphere allow winter snow to accumulate year after year, eventually forming massive continental ice sheets. When orbital patterns reverse, summers become stronger, ice melts, and we enter an interglacial like the one we're in now. This cycle has repeated dozens of times during the Quaternary period, with ice advancing and retreating in a kind of planetary heartbeat. During the coldest glaciations, ice stretched as far south as modern-day New York and London. During warm periods like now, the ice pulls back to Greenland and Antarctica, but it never disappears entirely. So while cities thrive, oceans rise, and ecosystems bloom in this temporary warmth, the deep machinery of Earth's climate is still operating on an icy rhythm. We're not in a permanent thaw. We're simply in the latest warm breath between frozen pulses a brief pause in an ice house world that hasn't yet finished its long, cold story. So why does any of this ancient heat wave history matter now? Because the past is beginning to look uncomfortably familiar. During the PATM, carbon flooded the atmosphere and global temperatures surged by up to 8 degrees C. But that spike took place over roughly 20,000 years. Today, we're injecting carbon into the atmosphere at a rate that's at least 10 times faster. And it's not volcanoes or methane hydrates doing the damage. It's us. Fossil fuel combustion, deforestation, and industrial activity have driven atmospheric CO2 past 420 parts per million, levels not seen since the last time crocodiles swam in the Arctic. The PETM offers a chilling precedent, not because it was identical, but because it shows what happens when Earth's carbon balance tips too far too fast. Rising temperatures, ocean acidification, shifting ecosystems and mass extinctions followed in the wake of that ancient warming. The difference today is speed. Our climate is changing over decades, not millennia, which gives life far less time to adapt. The parallels raise urgent questions. Could our current carbon surge trigger feedback loops like those during the PETM? Are we on the brink of our own runaway greenhouse moment? 
And if so, how will this ice house Earth respond? Looking back 55 million years isn't just about curiosity, it's about foresight. Earth's deep history tells us the climate system is powerful, sensitive, and anything but stable. It reminds us that the planet can and will change dramatically when pushed. So the real lesson isn't whether Earth can survive another PETM, it's whether we can. Earth has always been a planet of extremes, swinging between frozen wastelands and steamy, iceless jungles. From the deep freeze of the ice ages to the lush tropical world of the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, our planet has never stayed in one state for long. Climate isn't static, it's alive, reactive, and constantly shifting. The last time Earth was completely iceless, life didn't collapse. It adapted. Crocodiles swam in Arctic waters, rainforests reached the poles, and mammals evolved to fill new ecological niches. But the key difference now isn't just temperature, it's time. What took nature thousands of years to change, we are replicating in mere decades. And while Earth itself will survive, the question is, will we? The systems that support human life, our agriculture, our coastlines, our freshwater supply, were built for a stable, predictable climate. But Earth doesn't promise stability, it promises change. And that change is already unfolding. So as we look back at the last time Earth was iceless, we're not just exploring the past, we're glimpsing a potential future. One shaped not by tectonic shifts or orbital wobbles, but by our own decisions. The last time Earth boiled, life transformed in astonishing ways. But will our civilization be ready for the next great shift? Will we adapt or be overwhelmed by the speed of our own making? That's the question we must all face. If this story opened your eyes, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop a comment below. What surprised you the most about Earth's hot, iceless history?